Art Jeremiah here. I design, build, and sell terrain online. In the last two months alone, I've shipped out nearly 74 builds for people on eBay, Etsy, and more. Today, I'll be showing you my most recent build, a set of green crystals to go along with my Underdark style dungeon tiles. First off, I use a new blade and my snap-off knife to start cutting out small, oblong, rectangular pieces of XPS foam. For little crystals like these, a hobby knife will work just fine. Then I start making jagged cuts and forming the rectangular pieces into crystal shapes. I leave one end flat so I'm able to fix it to the base later. In order to get the look I'm going for, I slice the edges off the long sides of the rectangular pieces, then sharpen the top of the crystal. I make sure to leave sharp edges as this will make the highlighting easier later. To give the crystals a more pleasing and natural look, I try to vary the heights as I sculpt them. The easiest way to go about this is to go for three basic sizes, tall, medium, and short. I also make sure I don't have equal amounts of each size, just to increase the varied look of the crystal clusters we are creating. Towards the end of sculpting the pieces, I decided to add a few low profile pieces to represent crystals that are just starting to grow. I take a small container full of shredded paper towels and add water. After adding the water, I started tearing the pieces up more and kneading the mixture together with my hands. I'm just trying to get it broken into small enough pieces to create a pulpy mixture. I continue to look for large chunks and breaking them up until I get the consistency I want. Then I add white PVA glue to the mixture. I stir it up and make sure to get all the pieces of paper towel soaked in the glue water mixture. Next, I lay out a piece of parchment paper big enough to make five bases. This part is a little messy, but very straightforward. I just grab little balls of paper mache mixture and press them as flat as you see me doing in this video. I try to build on these pieces and ensure that the structure will make a stable base when dry. When I'm happy with the result, I set them aside to dry for a day or two. I actually put these ones in my hot car while I was at work and that really helped bake them dry. At least in summer, this is a trick I frequently use to get my builds to dry faster. So it turned out that I did not get back to the build for a few days and I started to lose pieces. So I stuck them all together in one Ziploc bag so I didn't lose them all and have to start completely over. As you can see as I'm separating the pieces, the paper mache stiffened quite nicely. For this build, I want the bases to have a black bottom and have more reinforcement. I chose to use some thick construction paper for that task. This is something I've been experimenting with a lot lately and been using in my smaller builds. So I cut the construction paper into square pieces that are slightly larger than my bases. I use a brush to paint thin layers of tacky glue onto the bottom of the base, then affix them to the pieces of construction paper. I set them aside for a minute because I noticed that I had some rough surfaces that I didn't like. So I took a piece of 600 grit sandpaper and fixed the problem. For this build, I affix the bases to a piece of cardboard with masking tape. This will help prevent warping when the bases are wet in the upcoming steps. In retrospect though, it may have been a good idea to have pieces of parchment paper under the bases as well because I did have glue leak through some and pulled up tiny bits of cardboard when I removed the bases later on. Some of the edges were bothering me, so I took my hobby knife and carefully chiseled down the places that were bugging me the most. This is not a necessary step, and honestly, I doubt you can even tell the difference in the end result. Next, I take my hot glue gun and I glue the crystal pieces to the bases. There isn't really a sequence to follow when doing this, I just try to make sure they have variety. Again, as usual with my builds, I try to do an uneven amount of large, medium, and small amounts. For this build, I have one large cluster, one small cluster, and three medium clusters. It just helps the overall look of the design. Notice how the bases really help the crystals jut out randomly, giving them a more natural looking appearance. Now, I dilute some tacky glue with a little bit of water and start adding the glue to the base with a cheap brush. I make sure to paint the glue over the base onto the construction paper. This will help the base more and give the edge the low profile we are going for. Then, I take my play sand and I sprinkle it over the glue. I do this on all the bases. After the glue dries for a little bit, I shake off the loose sand. There were some spots I wanted to build up, so I decided to do some touching up on the bases until I was happy with the results. My last spray painting styrofoam video, I did not capture footage about how I went about it, so I made sure to find my little tripod and show you how I went about it. For this build, I am using Iron Lac Sugar Spray Paint. As you may know, spray paint more often than not melts styrofoam. 
Well, this paint is safe to use on Styrofoam. I've also heard that the Liquitex brand is safe, but I have yet to try that out. I will have affiliate links posted below for these spray paints. I do earn a little commission from these links. I think it's about 3%. So if you would like to help support this channel, please go through that link and purchase your spray paint. It is from Blick Art Materials, which is a source I've been using for over two decades now, and I've never had a bad experience with them. So anyway, I start out by covering the crystals in a vibrant bright green. I believe the exact color is called cordial, but that's not too important. With this layer, I get a nice even coat over each of the pieces. I just continue spraying until I know I have gotten every nook and cranny of each crystal cluster. Next, I grab my second color. For these crystals, I used a medium green. I believe it was called spearmint. I try to be careful and spray just the tops of the crystals. This is hard to do, but the end result is worth it. We are going for a gradiated look, which looks excellent when done on these spray cans. I grab my bright green again and touch up the bases and the bottoms. I get real close to the crystal clusters and spray towards the bases in a steady stream. This really helped finish off the transition of the two colors. After spray painting, I decided to do a little more touching up to the bases with sand so that the crystals look like they are growing out of the ground rather than sitting on top of it. Then I start painting the bases black. The black paint I am using is slightly diluted with water so I can get clean crisp lines as well as so the paint will sink into the cracks easier. I use a smaller fine point brush to apply black paint to the paste around the edges of the crystals. I do my best to get a clean crisp line and try not to hit the crystals with black paint. I try not to do too thin of lines as this will help when using a larger brush to finish up the bases. This takes a little time but the clean black line will really help the crystal stand out. After going around all the crystals, I used a slightly larger brush to slop on some thicker black paint. This thicker coat will help keep the sand in place and prevent the PVA glue from reactivating. I want the crystals to match my underdark tiles, so I do a light overbrush with spots of blue, purple, and gray. I try to give the bases a mottled look and make sure I don't blend the three colors together too much. This will give the ground a varied look that is more pleasing to the eye. Just remember, the overbrushing technique is slightly different than dry brushing. Basically, overbrushing is similar to dry brushing, just with more paint in your brush. After overbrushing the three colors onto the base, I use light gray and carefully dry brush over the bases. I do this over all three colors. This will help add some uniformity and highlighting to the bases. If you've made it this far into the video and enjoy what you've seen, feel free to like this video and subscribe to my channel. Liking this video will help my video reach more people and I would personally really appreciate that. Also, if you want to be notified when my next video is uploaded, then hit the bell icon below. Now that I'm finished painting the bases, I want to peel off the masking tape. I didn't have much problem separating the bases from the masking tape. So I did get some glue or paint that leaked through the bottom and stuck the bases to the cardboard. Like I mentioned earlier, I should have taped some parchment paper under the pieces of terrain. It wasn't really a huge problem, there were just a few tiny spots of cardboard that got stuck to the black. It was easy enough to scrape off with a hobby knife and a piece of sandpaper. Now that I have the majority of the masking tape off and every piece is loose and freestanding, I take a pair of scissors and trim the spare construction paper off. I cut through just a tiny bit of the outside edge of where I glued the play sand so that I have a nice strong edge to the bases. Also, I try to give the edges a rounded organic look. I just like the way it looks and feel it gives a realistic touch and blends in better with other pieces of scenery. Now I want to highlight the edges of the crystals with a bright white. For this, I use a Vallejo cold white because it is fairly opaque and I don't have to go over the pieces repeatedly to get the effect I am going for. Because the crystals have sharp edges, I use a flat brush to do a controlled dry brush just over the edges of the crystals. This will give the crystals an excellent looking highlight that is fairly easy to achieve. After I spray the crystals with matte varnish, I bring them back to my desk and add a liberal coat of gloss varnish. This will give them a glass-like surface and add a touch more realism to the build. 
This is part of my Underdark series I am currently working on, and it was a very fulfilling little build. If you have constructive criticism, compliments, special requests, or anything really, then feel free to comment below. I would love to hear from you, and I will comment back when appropriate. That's it for this build. Please hit the bell icon below if you would like to stay tuned for my next terrain building videos. Check the description for links to the products that I use, and also to my social media accounts, as well to my Patreon, eBay, and Etsy store. Thanks so much for watching, it really has been a pleasure.